Hi, my name is Mark Galley. I'm with Think Reliability out of Houston, Texas. Um, this is a case study for a root cause analysis on the I-35 bridge collapse that happened in Minneapolis, Minnesota on August 1st, 2007. Uh, the source of the information is from the uh, National Transportation Safety Board and the uh, Minnesota Department of Transportation. It was compiled by Angela Griffith, who's also with uh, Think Reliability, and I'm just going to go through a quick summary of the uh, of the investigation and, and how we lay out a cause map, a root cause analysis for this issue. The, the title that I have here is The Straw That Broke the Camel's Back, and it's got some detail uh, specifically about the gusset plates that are, that are causally related to this, uh, to this failure. These are pictures from the NTSB uh, report. They were taking, the, the top picture was taken by a, a passenger on a commercial flight. Uh, just a couple hours before the uh, the bridge collapse. And the web addresses, if you want to pause the video, the web addresses for the NTSB report are, are listed at the bottom of the page. There are two different addresses there. Um, the cause mapping methodology um, that, that we use, the root cause analysis method, d defines a problem and, and frames it within uh, four basic questions. What's the problem? When did it happen? And where did it happen? And then it, everything is linked to the the impact to the goals. That provides the beginning of the analysis step so that you can ask some simple why questions. You're, you're starting with the negative consequence or the negative impact to the goals and then asking why questions as you read across the page. So if you built this on chart paper or dry erase board, you're just asking why questions as you read across the page. The analysis gets uh, more detailed and in this case the uh, the NTSB report is 178 pages. It gets extremely detailed and there's very good evidence, uh, very good um, thorough information in terms of dissecting this issue in that NTSB report. The uh, solution step has to do with what could be done to prevent uh, an issue from occurring. It's about changing controlling causes to prevent or change effects and from the possibilities, the best solutions are selected, and then those go into an, to an action plan, which there was after this, uh, this particular issue. Uh, there's a, a, a diagram. It shows a little bit about how the NTSB laid out knowing the traffic flows. There was construction equipment on the bridge when it collapsed, and because of the photo from the, the passenger jet, they're able to determine exactly where those were located and the, the load, the weight of all those materials. The NTSB even weighed the cars that were lifted out of the water uh, to reconstruct the analysis in a very thorough uh, way. This is a timeline that, that we put together for the incident out of the report. It just says the bridge was, was designed and built in the uh, early mid-60s. Uh, uh, it was open to traffic in 1967, and then some work had been done through the years, but the bridge had basically been in service for, for 40 years when it, when it collapsed. So the bridge is, is 40 years old and uh, has handled a, a lot of traffic uh, every day for, for 40 years. It's a simple outline with those questions, what, when we're impacted goals. Obviously, people would say the problem is the bridge collapse, and it's got the date and the time and ask what was different and then where this happened, and you see the impact of the goals. This investigation doesn't start with a bridge collapse. It starts with the fatalities, the loss of life, and the, the severe injuries, the 145 people that were injured, the 13 fatalities, the, the loss of the bridge, the property, the replacement of the bridge. You can write a more detailed analysis, but it's still based on those same four questions. So these are the same uh, same four questions in the basic problem outline. This is a little more detailed view, but, but same uh, structure. It just allows you to begin every investigation very basic and then add as much detail uh, as you need. Uh, the, the cause map always starts with the impact of the goals and then asks why questions as you read across the the page and that's why the cause map builds to the right. The arrows point in the direction of time because the, the cause is producing the effect on the left. Um, the effect is always on the left, the cause is always on the right and it just collects and organizes all the information so even something as, as uh, complex as this bridge collapse can still begin with uh, this idea of the safety goal being impacted because uh, 13 people were killed. So that was one of the impacts to the safety goal was the fatalities, obviously the most, uh, the most serious, the fatalities, which were caused by the, the, the bridge collapses, which is caused by, and they determined it was a fracture of a, the gusset plates. There's a, a lot of work that has to go into explaining that simple cause and effect relationship between bridge collapse and gusset plate. It, it looks simple here, but there's a, it's only one cause and effect relationship. There's a lot of detail that goes into this. And that's what the investigation is, is for. When you're first building it, it may not be 
clear what the cause and effect relationships are. Uh, we work from an existing NTSB report, but obviously in the investigation you'd have a lot of question marks as you're piecing the evidence together. So you begin the investigation, even something as complex as this, with just simple why questions. Now this map is, is accurate at this basic uh, level of detail is just not very thorough. It's not not complete. Here the 145 injuries have been added in, so both those safety items, the fatalities and the injuries, both caused by the bridge collapsing. This looks like uh, seven Ys up to this point. It says that uh, insufficient load capacity of the gusset plate caused by insufficient uh, design thickness caused by, and then it gets into some details of shear calculations, maybe not being performed as thoroughly as they could have, and the question is, well, why, why is that? And it, it backs into quite a bit more detail, but again, very basic level here. This would be eight why questions where some detail has been added in between here where it says it's not just that the bridge collapsed and people died, specifically the bridge collapsed, and that causes vehicles to fall uh, a significant distance into the the water or onto the, the road deck, which causes the, the injury. So in between any cause and effect relationship, as a lot of you have seen, you can add add more detail. And this is where the, the map becomes the method of organizing the investigation. This is the, the specific point from that title slide that, that a part breaks, a, a bolt breaks, or a piece of paper gets ripped in two because the stress on that part is greater than the strength of that part. It's the reason anything uh, breaks or fractures or bends or tears is the stress on it is greater than the strength of it and if you dissect that the stress greater than the strength is caused by there's this amount of stress and there's this amount of strength and the next question for each one of those is why is this the stress and why is this the strength it's it's similar to that that statement that a lot of people have heard well that's the straw that broke the camel's back so if we consider the effect that the camel's back was was broken the camel's back uh, breaks it's caused by the stress on the camel's back is greater than the strength of the camel's back which means it's got to be made up of there's a certain amount of stress on the back and there's a certain amount of strength of the back and if you continue to ask why questions this is where people say well that that's the straw that broke the camel's back and there's a lot of focus that goes on that last straw um, but really for the stress to be that amount on the camel's back, it doesn't just take that last straw, it takes all of the straw and that last straw. So regularly people focus on what was the thing that caused the issue, but it, it's always all of the causes. Um, the straw that broke the camel's back is almost misleading because it says, well, that's the one thing, and it, it, it's not that one straw, it's all of the straw together with that last one produces that that incident so causes should be thought of really not as the cause but as one of the causes because the incident is really a, a system an, an incident or a problem requires all of the causes it's all of the causes contribute to the incident by by definition that's that's what a cause is so it's it's really pretty straightforward but sometimes is made uh, uh, more complicated than it needs to be by a lot of groups they throw in a lot of adjectives to describe types of causes but really in the cause mapping method um, there are, there are just causes. Um, this analysis then would break out into the gusset plate fractures because the load on the gusset plate exceeds the load carrying capacity of the gusset plate. This is the stress and the strength and there's more detail that would be needed to explain this. The load is caused by, obviously there's, there's the traffic that's on the bridge but there's the weight of the bridge itself so there's this this dead load weight of the structure itself and then there was the construction material that was also added but but people say there's there's always traffic on the bridge that's what the bridge is for but it still ends up becoming one of the causes of that stress being that amount so if if we take each one of these and dig into them for example the increased load on the structure of the bridge is in 1977 they added some additional um, decking uh, approximately two inches of decking, and that increases the load of the bridge by, by approximately three million pounds. And then later on, there were some upgrades to the median and barriers and railings, and, and that adds some more weight. So through the life of the bridge, more weight was, was added to the bridge, which adds to the stress side. The load carrying capacity was potentially what it's, was what it's been since the original design and, and construction. Uh, there are inspections of the bridge that are done uh, every year, but some of these things were, were obviously not well understood or, or uh, missed. If you ask why uh, there's insufficient design thickness, it gets in again to the calculations and some of the oversight, even the inspections are going to, to drop into there. This is where you'd say, at this point we have 15 why questions, so it's great to start with two or three or four or five why questions, but you can add as, really as much detail as you want. This is an example of cause and effect relationships 
from 1977 that uh, there's a potential impact the property goal and because of decreased life of the bridge because of rebar corrosion because of the road chemicals that interact with that rebar that reinforcing bar that's in the bridge so to prevent the chemicals um, affecting the life of the rebar in the bridge and consequently affecting the strength of the bridge um, increased concrete or thicker concrete can be overlaid which was done in 1977 that's why the two inches of, of road decking it's a little bit thicker it, it adds some more weight so increasing that concrete uh, is a solution in 1977 but any any solution you implement also produces effects and in this case that increased concrete that weighs three million pounds increases the dead load weight uh, of that of that structure so a solution in 1977 uh, can become one of the causes of an incident in 2007 and that's sometimes what people refer to in their business as unintended consequences is that we we implemented a solution that created or produced effects in the future that we didn't anticipate that it solved one problem but inadvertently added to contributed is what a lot of people would would normally say and it does it contributes to uh, some other effects and some undesirable effects in in this case this is a little more detailed analysis and if you if you build out the map with all the information the NTSB report it gets even quite a bit larger than this but it's just to lay out a, a visual dialogue to understand all the information in terms of cause and effect relationships and it's got the uh, solution from 1977 in there this was built using our, uh, our cars mapping Excel template which is it's based in Excel but for doing a thorough root cause analysis it has the tabs in there and that's available on our website at thinkreliability.com there's a summary page we made that's got the action items that came out of in terms of recommended recommended solutions from the NTSB report that are laid out connected to the specific cause that it controls that matches up with that that map and we also made an eight and a half by eleven PDF which is a summary of of the incident. It's got the very basic cause map with three or four five why questions uh, there below that problem outline and then adds to a more a little more detailed map with those 11 uh, solutions that are identified. So it's just meant to be a kind of a, a learning tool um, in terms of reference with your groups in terms of how cause and effect lays out, how it can be laid out visually, how evidence can be provided to support specific causes. That's what those uh, those magenta boxes are beneath the, the causes and then the green boxes are solutions that were identified to control the causes. And that's what a solution does. If you'd like to learn more about our method, we have public workshops and, and we have client workshops. We do investigations regularly, so don't hesitate to call our office. And uh, the phone number is there. Our web address is, is thinkreliability.com. Um, we we teach a, a lot of workshops on site for clients, but we also do public workshops where just one or two people can attend. Our uh, We have a couple workshops left in 2009, but our 2010 schedule is up on our website now. If there's a problem you'd like to see dissected within your business, we regularly do uh, client-specific issues, facilitation and coaching through uh, their specific issues. And then any information you're interested in these webinars, if this was useful for you, please let us know. Tell us more what you'd like to learn about or any case study you'd like to see. So thanks very much. I appreciate you taking the uh, time, and uh, have a great day.